Thanks to Brown University for this research on COVID-19 flow in our cars, how airflow inside a car may affect COVID-19 transmission risk. What works best for windows and ventilation? Fascinating. So we have six different configurations here. One, two, three on the top, four, five, six. Um, number one, configuration one, uh, reflects the worst case scenario. You have all the windows here in black, all closed, right? And then they look at different configurations. Here you could see closed, back one closed, front uh, driver side uh, closed, rear right closed, and then it goes on and on. So we'll break it down. Best configuration, obviously, um, configuration six, all windows are open. And the platforms, the gig companies encourage you to do that. Uh, many people automatically get in the car, um, put the windows down. Don't be against it. That's their wish. They obviously know a little bit about this. Uh, don't fight them and put the windows up. I tell you, that'll cause way too many problems and health risks and your tips are gone. I'll guarantee you that. So a new study looks at how airflow patterns inside the passenger cabin of a car might affect the transmission of um, SARS or COVID-19 and other airborne pathogens using computer simulations. The study looked at the risk of aerosol particles being shared between a driver and a passenger in different window configurations. Redder shades indicate more particles. Risk was shown to be higher with windows closed top left and decreasing with each window open. The best case was having all windows open. So this new study uses computer simulations to track airflows inside a car's passenger cabin, providing potential strategies. Some of them counterintuitive for reducing the risk of transmitting airborne diseases. A new study of airflow patterns inside a car's passenger cabin offers some suggestions for potentially reducing the risk of COVID-19 while you're driving with others. The study by a team of Brown University researchers used computer models to simulate the airflow inside a compact car with various combinations of windows open or closed. The simulation showed that opening windows, the more windows the better, created airflow patterns that dramatically reduced the concentration of airborne particles exchanged between a driver and a single passenger blasting the car's ventilation system didn't circulate air nearly as well as a few open windows the researchers found. So don't assume that because you've got the ventilation going, okay, this is doing the trick, right? They are showing, experts are showing you the way. Driving around with the windows up and the air conditioning or heat on is definitely the worst scenario according to our computer simulations. Um, makes sense. Got all the windows up, you got the particles in the air and you got the ventilation um, moving these particles around. That's worst case scenario, scenario one. The best scenario found was having all four windows open, but even having one or two open was far better than having them all closed. Um, das co-led the research with Varghese Matai, a former postdoctoral research researcher at Brown who is now an assistant professor of physics at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. The study is published in the journal Science Advances. Pretty sweet. A uh, study published recently in Science Advance looked at how airflow patterns inside the passenger cabin of a car might affect the transmission of COVID or SARS and other airborne pathogens. The simulations produced some potentially counterintuitive findings. For example, one might expect that opening windows directly beside each occupant might be the simplest way uh, to higher exposure risk compared to putting down the window opposite each occupant. When the windows opposite uh, the occupants are open, you get a flow that enters the car behind the driver, sweeps across the cabin behind the passenger, and then goes out the passenger side front window said Kenny Breuer, a professor of engineering at Brown and a senior author of the research, that that pattern helps to reduce cross-contamination between the driver and passengers. The researchers stress 
that there's no way to eliminate risk completely. And of course, current guidance from the US Centers for Disease Control, CDC notes that postponing travel and staying home is the best way to protect personal community health. The goal of the study was simply, uh, simply to study how changes in airflow inside a car may worsen or reduce risk of pathogens transmission. Now, what they don't talk about is, let's say even the best scenario, all windows open, everyone's obviously wearing masks, right? And your ventilation is off. So it's not adding to the circulation. The computer models used in this study simulated a car loosely based on a Toyota Prius, probably the one, the most common driven car, with two people inside, a driver and a passenger sitting in the back seat on the opposite side from the driver. The researchers chose that seating arrangement because it maximized the physical distance between the two people, though still less than the six feet recommended by CDC. The model simulated airflow around the inside of a car moving at 50 miles per hour, as well as the movement and concentration of aerosols coming from both driver and passenger. Aerosols are tiny particles that can linger in the air for extended periods of time. Now, part of the reason that opening windows is better in terms of aerosol transmission is because it increases the number of air changes per hour, ACH, inside the car, which helps to reduce the overall concentration of aerosols. But ACH was only part of the story the researchers say the study showed that different combinations of open windows created different air currents inside the car that could either increase or decrease exposure to remaining aerosols. So I'm going to leave the article for you below. Um, important to, again, take a picture of this study. These type of configurations act on it. You may save some lives. I also want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Kova, K-O-V-E-R. You get one month free with the link beneath the video, starts at $7 a month, 24-7 health service, paid time off, sick leave, automatic mileage tracking, and legal protection with all of these gig companies. What is legal protection? Well, if they wrongfully deactivate you, you have legal rights here, which is their legal arm. It will send out the legal letters to these gig companies and say, hang on, you wrongfully terminated my client. Reinstate them, right? Put them back behind the driver wheel. Um, hope this never, never happens to you, but in case of an injury, if you've had an accident, if you or your riders have been injured, make very sure you contact these guys at Legal Rideshare. They will handle the entire insurance claims process for you. You might have lost wages. Your car might be damaged. They will go after all the damages for you. So fascinating article. Please um, spread this. Uh, share this video. Let's save lives. Um, what configuration do you drive in? How do you handle the situations of uh, the various situations with passengers when it comes to windows and ventilation? I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you.